So uh, listen, I've been a fan of yours for a while and I'm curious, you've done so many things. If someone has actually never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why? Uh, probably. Uh, my name is Joe because it's a good, very uh, nice film made by a genius director, Ken Loach, and filmed entirely in Glasgow, where I, where I live. Uh, I would recommend that they watch that, you know. And, and that's the one they gave me the big prize for way back in the day when they gave me the, the actor prize at Cannes. So, so even if someone doesn't like it, they can go online and they can say, well, they gave him best actor. Oh. So I would recommend that one. Uh, one of the things about this is uh, your character makes a decision to basically let the elves uh, die. And I'm just curious, do you personally agree with that decision or would you have given them the mithril? Uh, I absolutely agree with that de decision. They're boring as all the hell and kill the elves. That, that comes from the dwarf. King Dwarf says the elves deserve everything they get. They're too big, literally and metaphorically. Get rid of <laughs> Not the answer I was expecting, but I appreciate the humor. Um, one of the things about, listen, I love the series and I'm blown away by the scale and scope and just everything that it's like an eight hour movie. It's not a TV show. Yeah, um, yeah. What was it like for you, actually? Because you've been involved in so many different things. What was it like for you stepping on set for the first time and realizing what this thing was going to be? Uh, well, stepping on first time, it was kind of tricky in the sense that I hadn't been given the scripts. I only got the scenes that I was in. So I've got no context. I don't know what anyone else is doing. I don't know what size it is. I knew it was big. But then Harry Potter was big. I mean, so what? Big deal. You know, just because something's big doesn't mean it's going to be any good. Um, so putting on the set was, was interesting because it's, it's it's like any big sets that I've been in. Uh, you you reduce it mentally and emotionally as an actor. You reduce it to you, your cosy, your lines, and your fellow your fellow comrades, your act your your mates, your your actors, and so you make the world very very small because you need to because you're going to climb up a very big mountain. Uh, and if you allow if you allow the size of something to get to you, then you'll freeze, you'll you'll choke, you'll panic. So it's vital to get to, to be comfortable with your fellow actors and with the crew and with the director. So personally, I would always say any actor in these big sets is make it very small, have a laugh, take the mickey out of it, don't take it too seriously. And that way, come the serious moments, you can explore the same way as you would if you were in a no-money production. There was a guy who said to me years ago, and I don't normally pay much heed to, to wise folk in the industry telling you wise things. They usually tend to be dicks. Um, but this guy did say one thing that really stuck with me, and it was professionalism is not a standard, it's a state of mind. And he was right, because if you're in a no-budget film, you should be given just as much attention and just, amount, and just the same amount of effort and 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 ex exploration as you do in a big budget production, money shouldn't come into it. So size shouldn't come into it. So if you have the same attitude in a low budget production as you do in a big budget production, then then you'll have your own working method that's true to what you're doing. And I think that's something sometimes actors, not necessarily young actors, but some actors let the size of something. It, it, it get to them and they feel that they should somehow fill that space and and that's that's a mistake and where we were lucky in Lord of the Rings was that the directors made us all feel very much like it's a low budget student production they they, they kept the scale at bay and, and and you have to do that because if you don't you will get performances that have no basis in any kind of truth. They're just based on fear because the actor's terrified, rightly so. The actor's thinking, shit, I don't, I don't deserve a big trailer or a big set or a big fancy costume. Who am I? You know, you, so you, you, you immediately doubt yourself. 
So we are really lucky that in this to walk on on those sets and it not be a big deal. You don't want to look at the you don't want to, you want to be familiarize yourself with a set in relation to what you're doing, but you don't want to spend too much time looking at it going, wow, this is amazing. You don't want to do that till maybe after the first week when you're feeling all right. Uh you and uh, Owen um uh are fantastic together. And I'm just curious, how much were you guys talking before you stepped on set about your relationship? And building a bond, and how much was it just you guys are good actors? Yeah, I'd say it's the last or the last thing. I think we 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 can act, and we both know it. And we didn't do any talking about it, characters or any of that stuff. And we just got on really well, and we trusted one another. So uh, the only thing I know about acting is never tell another actor to do. That's the only thing I know. Is uh, now a director comes in, they can tell you, you know, more of this, less of this, whatever. But the only thing I know about acting is I would never tell another actor what to do. So uh, if an actor wants to talk about things, absolutely, I don't have any problems. But I would never suggest or move it. That's If, they, if they're going to be a light bulb, I'll be a lampshade. And, and if they want to be the lampshade, I'll be the light bulb. And if they want to jump between the two during a scene, fine by me. I mean, I love, I love the fact that be, between the word action and cut, you can go wherever you go. It's 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 as F. Scott Fitzgerald said about cre- creativity. It's a big block of ice, hot stove. It'll go, it'll go wherever it goes. And acting for me should be the same. Just go wherever it's going to take you. You know, sometimes you do a wet performance and you cry your eyes out. And the next take, you do a dry performance and there's no tears. Who knows which one's better? Give it and the rest is up to the director and the editor and stuff. So with, with Owen and I, we had a really lovely trust and respect. And and other than that, we just played the scenes. It was great. He's beautiful to work with. Lovely. Uh, I'm curious, when you, how familiar were you with Tolkien's work prior to getting cast? And how much did you feel, because Lord of the Rings is so beloved by so many people, that you wanted to read everything and learn about the history so when fans come up to you, you could sort of talk about it? Well, I would hope no fan would ever come up to me because I don't have a clue about Tolkien or his world. It totally, it totally passed me by. Um, I, I, I've got mates that love it, know it inside out. I wasn't a Lord of the Rings kind of guy. I was more, uh, um, um, I would be more Dickens and Shakespeare in terms of the classics and Dostoevsky. I was more a Dostoevsky kind of guy. And a lot of the rings never, no, I, I had no feeling one way or the other for it. Uh, and I liked, I liked the first film uh, that Jackson did, other than that, I, I didn't watch any of the Hobbits or the other ones. I didn't know anything about the world at all, but I liked the idea of doing, uh, well, I love the idea of going to New Zealand, and I love the idea of just doing something that involved all that kind of silliness. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to say you did fantastic work. I really appreciate you giving me your time and good luck with the rest of your interviews today. Thanks, man. I'm so glad you get to work from home.